Uh, I'm going to try to cover a whole lot in this uh, video. This is uh, an interesting commercial I found that uh, would suggest to me that this is how it's going to look when the cloaking fails. That's me, Shukaku, and Chris Hadfield, the astronaut. They're driving around, yucking it up, and looking at all these <clears throat> celestial bodies close to the Earth. Yeah, I believe it's going to happen. Reason I say that is electromagnetism is the greatest long force. So here's the question what is the force in the universe is the strongest or the most powerful? Then they get into the four fundamental interactions. Strong nuclear, which of course that's the one which holds the atoms together and so forth. That's the strongest. Electromagnetic is the next strongest. <clears throat> Gravity is way down here. 10 to the minus 40th power as strong. Now, <clears throat> We got the sun simulator up there. I think everybody is aware of that extreme uh, likelihood. And it, for it to be up there parked, it has to be in a sun synchronous orbit, which is between 700 to 800 kilometers above the Earth. So therefore, therefore, it can remain in a constant orbit in front of our sun. So when the cloaking finally fails. <clears throat> This is something like what we're going to be looking at, in my humble opinion. Now, I got the space weather stuff here, too, I'm going to show you, but let's cover this real quick. This is an electromagnetic grid pattern throughout the whole planet, and I've recognized this back as early as April. <clears throat> you can see it's been like this. And I made several videos covering this. So we have an extreme electromagnetic pressure upon the planet. It's also reflected, and you really need to click full screen down here on the lower right, that box, for, in order to see this the best. This is helioviewer.org, and I'll put all the links in the description box. This is at, on the SDO spacecraft satellite, taking pictures of the sun. At 94 angstroms, you can see the electromagnetic grid pattern around here. And I covered that in my April 6th video. This also shows up good on the 304 angstrom. Whoops. On the 94 angstrom. Oh, 335 angstrom. Okay. This thing must have got locked up somehow. So it shows up on Soho also. Okay, I had to go back in and refresh that. I don't know what this is here, and I got a, something that's blocked out. But anyway, here's the electromagnetic grid pattern from another view from the Soho spacecraft on the 195 angstroms. And it shows up also on the 300. Alrighty then. Well. That thing's gotten screwed up. But anyway, I showed you what I need to show you there. So basically, we are in a tug of war between Nemesis, binary twin sun, which emits mostly electrons, and our, our sun, which is out on this side, which emits mostly protons. And you can see we got an extreme amount of backside pressure coming in. And all these electrons are bleeding in, as you can see here, in these uh, folk radiation belt electrons. This is at the lowest level of the lowest energy electron reading. This is at the highest level of the highest energy electron readings. 10 keV, 4,000 keV, which translates to 4 MeV. I pulled up this... Uh, 
other one here. This is a geospace run, and this covers from about 10 UTC today, so about 5 a.m. today, Eastern Standard Time, up until about, I don't know, 13, 1400 UTC, somewhere around there, 1300. This one is delineating pressure, represents a pressure on the magnetosphere. Now this is the Y cut. They kind of have them reversed as opposed to the uh, this Y1 where the Z cut I have shown on the left and the Y cuts on the right. On this one, uh, and they got the uh, sun on the right side for uh, ISWA, and then they got the sun on the left side for this geospace. But nonetheless, so this is the Y cut. This is looking straight across on the equatorial plane view of our magnetosphere, our magnetopause. This is looking straight down on the X cut. This indicates pressure. The dark, deeper the red, the higher the pressure. So you can see we got a whole lot of pressure coming in from behind the Earth. This shows density. And the one thing I did notice was kind of interesting, and I haven't been accessing this. Uh, site for very long but I did notice the last few days and I didn't notice this before that that now we're getting sort of an angular pattern so that almost matches up with this angular grid pattern on helio viewer okay I got it to work anyway it's a magnetic resonant grid pattern and I hope you got this on full screen so you can really see these grids so, to me, well, of course, it's being reflected on Earth. So, we're basically locked between an electromagnetic tug of war between Nemesis and our second sun, or uh, and our sun. I'm sorry. Now, I found very little information about the 3,600 year cycle of Nibiru or Nemesis, whatever you want to call it. This is one site I was able to find above Top Secret, and then I'll conform to all their other uh, postings, but this one I do. This, These here show every 3,600 years something bad happens to this planet. Last time it happened was around 1600 BC. That's when they had the Great Santorini. Greek island blown up eruption that uh, extended more than 15 miles in all directions and here's some other evidence from tree rings ice core samples and so forth okay and I'll leave the links to all that stuff below of course now here's the ACE satellite this is uh, measuring uh, stuff coming from the Sun solar wind speed temperature which we don't really get into density which shows up on that geospace one I was showing you there's the phi angle it looks like we were pretty much connected to nemesis up until the missing time started well then it started to drop off and we had a connection sort of in between the earth and the sun I mean it's got to be something with nemesis I think nemesis connected to the sun through the earth somehow but anyway then we get the missing time from about 22 23 30 on this one up to about 6 30 and but you can see the solar wind starts climbing around uh 0700 or 06 30 when this thing came back online here's the space weather on iswa last 300 frames I pulled up this one I pulled up for a little bit longer back so these two don't exactly match in sync with this these three are all synced so let's watch this you can see the magnetopause is getting all whacked out of shape so this is 921 yesterday around 8 o'clock this runs pretty much through. There's a little bit of missing time between uh, 
0400 and 0500 on uh, the 22nd. But pay attention to the solar wind speed if you want to check the A satellite. So look at that. That's crazy, man. I mean, we've seen it before, but that's still crazy. So if you want to check the solar wind, look how it fluctuates. It's going up and down, up and down. Crazy numbers. Well, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, eight forty. As you can see on Ace, <clears throat> it never got really above. Never got to six hundred at any point. So we're getting some type of solar wind that's coming in from somewhere between this a satellite which is 930,000 miles in front of the earth at the l1 lagrange point one orbit position which keeps it directly between the earth and the sun at all times as these are other lagrange points where they can park satellites and keep them in a stationary position relative to the earth and the sun that's where the stereo behind is which supposedly has been down for the last several years i think it's just down because they don't want to show us any pictures from there that's my opinion anyway uh and there's the stereo ahead where they parked that one so this pretty much explains all that lagrange point and this is a really good little tutorial on space weather so we go back here I was looking at these polar cap potential I'll pull it down so you can see everything now um, Astral Traveler made a big deal about the polar cap differential and that I would say like say between 80 even though it's a minus and a plus so the difference between 80.9 and 42.9 that's 38 that's a big huge differential and uh, that's the biggest one I've found but it's been running in the 20s 20 plus for a, for a little while now and I don't know if you watched Dutch since his last vid you checked it out but um, since these big deep earthquakes, which happened uh, just within the last few days, usually something shallow with at least a magnitude plus differential above kicks off. And if this solar cap potential difference has anything to do do with earthquakes I'm saying we're gonna see a big one this shows the last 24 hours there hasn't been anything too crazy it's real deep ones through here so we got a big gap here this is the last 24 hours got a pretty good gap there so there's a lot of gaps where we could be experiencing a large earthquake if that solar cap potential has any relativity to earthquakes since it's been uh, since it's been very high I mean 38 that's the highest uh, pretty well close to the highest I've seen I think back when we had those 8.2's it was around 30 or 40 of a differential so let's watch for that see if see if that makes any difference so we'll let this play through I don't know if there's anything else that I can cover right now <clears throat> oh yeah now if you want to get up on all this stuff check out my videos here's the 4-6 one that's when I first recognized the uh, grid pattern around the Sun plus a huge planet coming up in the west or in the east or vice versa from whatever the sunrise or sunset should have been showed a huge planet coming up then we got uh, the grid patterns pretty much outlined and we got this tutorial so anyway 
I'm out of time. Peace out. God bless.